Hey there YouTube, you're with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to my friend Noplum99 and his recent video about aliens and artificial intelligence. Um, Jim, I really liked your video, and as much as I would like to dive into the uh, alien topic, uh, I, I think this video is already going to be longer than I normally would like it to be, uh, just talking about artificial intelligence. Um, but I'm going to have to beg your indulgence. I think this is like the one, two, three, fourth take I've tried to make of this video. Um, I've got so much to say and all of it competes to come out of my mouth at the same time. So rather than having some sort of brilliant uh, soliloquy off me, which uh, comes crashing down with a, a, a major substantive point, what you're going to get is a little meandering um, stream of consciousness rant as it were on this subject. You know, I have a lot of the uh, points you made in your video still in my head. I, I watched it for the second time about an hour ago. And um, I also have a lifetime of consideration to fall back on because this is a topic that I've been thinking about ever since I was a kid. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of sci-fi my whole life and the concept of artificial intelligence uh, wishing to do harm to man for me personally uh, uh, is as old as the um, film 2001 a space odyssey which i saw in the cinema when i was a boy <clears throat> and as you know hal goes crazy and uh, starts bumping off the crew and this is a recurring theme in a lot of science fiction um, my favorite one when i was a kid was i think it's called the the, the forbin project or something like that where they create this computer called Colossus which is going to uh, take control of our nuclear arsenal um, so as to eliminate any possibility of human error and it links itself up to the Soviet version of itself and they create their own language and talk to each other secretly and decide to take over the world that's a pretty good movie um, anyway so this is a well rehearsed sort of narrative but uh, I think as you point out in your video Jim without the evolutionary pressures they need to survive and reproduce uh, being necessary for artificial intelligence to exist. Um, I don't think it would necessarily develop those traits in the first place. I think we do anthropomorphize what we assume artificial intelligence would do with its intelligence because what we've done with our intelligence for the past 6,000 years of recorded history and probably for the previous, you know, 96,000 years before that. Uh, it, you know, is bump each other off for resources, um, even if the resource is other people, you know what I mean? And uh, human history is full of it. So it's natural, I think, for us to project that on other intelligences, be they artificial or alien for that matter. But I don't necessarily think that follows. Um, for one thing, you know, defining intelligence is hard enough, and defining the difference between intelligence and consciousness is you know nearly impossible um, however you know uh, people have tried and uh, I think somewhere on the road between intelligence and consciousness uh, you would stumble across a little thing called conscience you know this desire not to be harmed and not to do harm as much as is within your power more often than not you know is what your conscience is all about and that has spontaneously developed because of our need to survive together here you know on this planet um, but and I think that is a big part of consciousness as well consciousness is the ability I think to understand questions like why you know what is the purpose not how do things work but what is the purpose even though you can intellectualize things and realize that there is no purpose because everything is transient and blah 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 but we can conceive of the question why we can imagine that things have purpose and I think for artificial intelligence to be truly intelligent it would have to be able to imagine that's not just to say that it could exceed its own programming and learn things that it wasn't programmed to learn and so forth but imagine possibilities that it doesn't have any reason to know are possible until it you know considers them and so forth imagination is a huge part of, of consciousness and I think intelligence. It's difficult to decide which category to put it in if you ask me. And I think this is a huge problem for defining what artificial intelligence could be in the first place and how would we even decide that it was equal to our own or superior to our own until we can actually decide what we're going to include in the category and whether or not consciousness would emerge from pure intelligence is a question on its own but 
part of that question, I think, would be, you know, as human beings, we sort of imagine that we have this thing called free will. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a highly debatable point. Um, and I think we assume that for an artificial intelligence to be actually intelligent, it would have to presume itself to have free will. And isn't that how we would kind of define it as intelligent in the first place? I mean, if it couldn't possibly exceed its own programming, then it doesn't have free will, right? And is therefore it intelligent or is it just well programmed? These are questions that, uh, you know, I, I don't think ever go away. I don't think it'll go away when we have artificial intelligence, which is capable of, you know, mimicking human behavior to the point that we can barely tell the difference. Um, and let's talk a little bit now about what you were talking about in your video about the evolutionary pressures that uh, artificial intelligence may or may not be encumbered with. Um, I think a really important thing, especially as pertains to the potential for it to go wrong and imperil the human race, is... And I, I know I'm going to catch some shit for saying this, but you know, I, if an artificial intelligence has no means to be able to comprehend something as basic as pain, it has no means to even comprehend something as basic as fear, then yeah, of course, it would represent uh, potential jeopardy for us. And I think, therefore, it would probably be necessary to find some way for artificial intelligence to be able to comprehend things like pain and fear, which are by definition uh, <clears throat> characteristics of, you know, living organisms. So if an artificial intelligence was truly intelligent, we would have to also therefore consider it to be alive, would we not, in, in an artificial sense. And it, though it be artificial, could it really be seen to be alive if it hasn't got the other traits that an organism has, the ability to, you know, perceive its surroundings is one thing, but to be affected by its surroundings, for it to matter, I think that's another thing. And I don't understand, you know, at this point in our uh, technological level, how we're going to be able, if we're going to be able, to decide if an artificial intelligence tells us it perceives those things, how can we decide to our satisfaction that it's not just saying it, that it actually does understand what pain is and what fear is? Um, because it, you know, how would we know? How do, how do I know what your pain is to you? You know, we are the same basic beings and we have the same senses so that we therefore can infer uh, that we experience very, very, very similar things when it comes to pain or, uh, you know, emotional states or whatever. When it comes to an artificial intelligence, how would we know that it's not just mimicking behavior and saying what it's supposed to say, what it's been programmed to say, or what it's learned to say by mimicking behavior? Um, these are important questions, and I don't necessarily know that they have an answer. Now, I know people, plenty of people actually, who say that there will never be true artificial intelligence um, for lots of the reasons that I've just outlined. You know, there is no such thing as free will. Uh, for one thing, a lot of them will say, and therefore, um, you can't program free will when you don't even have it yourself, you know. Um, but, you know, be that by the by, from my point of view, if we're going to say something is intelligent, we first of all, we better define what we mean by intelligent. Uh, to the point where there's a general consensus and the difference between that and consciousness and how would we empathize with our artificial counterparts to know whether we to whether what they're experiencing is actually analogous or superior to our own um, you know what if the machines learn to lie you know just a thought Listen, I could wax on and on and on about this stuff for ages, um, but I think I'd rather keep the video to under 10 minutes and we're getting there now. Jim, I want to thank you for your video. Uh, maybe I'll discuss the whole alien thing in a future video if I, if I ever get around to it. You know, I'm actually surprised uh, that I've never actually made a video about whether or not I think, you know, aliens could, would, or would ever want to come to the Earth. So I think I'll get around to that in the near future. I want to thank you all for watching this video. Till next time. May all your ups and downs be ups.